first day for the Redneck Garage. Well, I'm out working today, and, and if you have children, we'll give you a multiple choice question. Um, my son called me, and do you think, let's see, we'll give you a multiple choice. He said, A, I love you, Dad, and I just wanted to see how you're doing. B, uh, I got you something when I was out at the store because I appreciate you so much. C, my car won't start, and since I never spend any time in the garage working with you hardly, and I don't know anything about cars, I am completely at the mercy of anyone else because I never learned to do it myself, so can you come over and look at my car that won't start? Which one of those three questions do you think I got the phone call? <laughs> well, of course it's three. It's my oldest son, and he's got the Jeep Cherokee, and one of the videos we did was replacing the head gasket. I think I did another one where it wouldn't start. Now it won't start again. So we're going over to take a look at it, try to diagnose it, and go through some troubleshooting steps on, hey, my car won't start. Well, here it is, a 98 Jeep Cherokee 2.5 manual two-door, which is really kind of unusual. You don't see that many two-doors. Uh, this one is. I guess he got new tires. Now, the other day he said, hey, it's kind of running kind of funny. It's chugging a little bit. It's not starting in the morning, but once it gets going, it's running okay. And I was just like, well, I don't know. Stick some seafoam in it and see if that helps. Had a conversation about three or four months ago where he said, yeah, I forgot my gas cap at the gas station. Will it hurt to drive it without a gas cap on? Well, of course, I assumed that meant drive it up to AutoZone or drive it home and go get a gas cap. No, he drove it for three months, four months, I don't know, without a gas cap. I said, you have to get a gas cap, son. Now, the way this truck is made, water could just run in here and I think could get into... My fear is that water could run down and get into the gas tank itself. And that was my first thought. Now it won't start. We're going to take a look at what we got going on and why it's not going to start. This has been a really good truck. It's got 202,000 miles. He's driven the crap out of it. I had him fill it up with high test gas just in case. Transmission feels loose. See what we get. Hmm. All right, so most of the time when you're looking at uh, something wrong with your vehicle, your best diagnostic tool sits above your head, in between your shoulders. And you gotta think about what's going on. The Jeep doesn't sound like it's getting any fuel or maybe spark, so we're going to go to the easiest thing first. We're going to start checking spark, fuel, and then we'll go on from there to computer, timing chain, all those other things that it could be. But go to the easiest stuff first, because why would you want to go through the hard stuff and find out it was just a loose wire? I got a cheap fuel pressure gauge here that I got off of Amazon. I'll put a link down below. Um, and this will be good to determine what kind of fuel pressure we got on our fuel rail right here, this is got four injectors in it. So I'll hook that up. All right, so we got 45 pounds of fuel roughly coming off the fuel rail, so it's got pressure. All right, so I'm gonna crank it over. I got the hose disconnected from the gauge. I'm gonna crank it over and get some gasoline, pump into this thing and see how much water, if any, do we have in the fuel. If it's got a lot of water, it's not gonna start either. The fuel looks good. There's no big amount of water in there. Whatever's at the very bottom, that was from the the drink I had in here, but the uh, that looks good. I'll pour just a little bit of fuel in the intake and see if the injectors are working. Alright, so at this point we want to see if it's got any spark. We think that it has fuel. The uh, gas is clean. It's got plenty of fuel pressure. Maybe it's not getting a spark. Okay, I checked all the cam and crank sensors with my old 2500 MT snap-on. Everything seems to be fine. But then, once I eliminated that, thinking it's not the computer, it's not anything else, I started messing with the wires, thinking, okay, let's check the wires. And when I pulled up on the distributor, this is what we got. So the coil wire is burnt off of this piece of crap. And that's why it won't start. Now I haven't taken the cap off, but a lot of times when you get something that's burnt out like that, it's either going to be a bad cap, rotor, something. So we'll probably go ahead and replace the cap and the rotor and the wires. And hopefully that'll do it. 
he'll have to I'll have him put some plugs in it here later so while I was in line at AutoZone I watched one of the employees go out to the parking lot and pull codes on this later model Ford truck and then come in and decide to tell this guy all the parts that he needed to buy to fix his trouble codes uh, on his check engine light so I got the parts at AutoZone just because it was the closest and I dealt with those goofs and uh, it's amazing when people go in there what they tell them is wrong with their car and they have no clue at all. My son decided to go in there before he wanted to bother me with it and uh, they told him it was probably his fuel pump and I said how do they know that? He goes I don't know and I'm like it has nothing to do with fuel pump so there you go. Alright so we'll go ahead and replace the cap, the rotor and I'm not going to do all the wires I'm going to make him do some new spark plugs because they could be causing an issue and then we'll find out if the coil is any good because the coil could actually be what caused that uh, I'm hoping not because I remember putting a new coil on this at some point the cap and rotor don't look super bad but we'll go ahead and replace them anyway because I got it off when you replace a distributor cap don't be a goof and take all the wires off and go oh which one does that go to do it one at a time hold it up to the next one and just swap it over to the new one and you'll be in good shape Here's the old one and you can see it just burn all the way through eventually. And there's the new one I'm going to stick on and then we'll see if it's a start. Alright, here's the moment of truth. <laughs> That's awesome. Alright, so what's the takeaway of this? Well, first of all, if my son had listened to the goose at AutoZone, he would have put in a new fuel pump, turned the key, and it still wouldn't start. Secondly, when you go to AutoZone and have them diagnose what's wrong with your car, you may end up buying a bunch of parts and being a parts changer rather than a diagnostic guy that goes in and looks out and finds out what's wrong before you replace the parts. So learn how to do it yourself. Start with the simple stuff. Wire, cap, spark, gas, you got all those things, then you're going to look at your computer and all this other stuff. On the Jeeps, aside from the crank sensor, which is one of the most problematic parts to go out, it's usually going to be something simple. And that's what it was today. It was a coil wire. Now, my son's going to come over here and put new plugs in his Jeep and finish up the wires because he doesn't mind doing that kind of stuff. He hasn't spent enough time with me to learn how to actually diagnose anything because that's today's generation, except for you, the guys that are doing it yourself, that are turning wrenches. That's awesome! We'll have some more videos coming up. i got some painting to do. I'm David from the Redneck Garage. Key! Turning wrenches.